hashtag blessed I always like. Did you actually use hashtag blessed? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe as, a, maybe as a joke. In our society today, it seems like we pinpoint the problem that we have with somebody or with something, mm -hmm. and then everything about that person uh, gets dismissed or or missed in some way. Jacked in an amazing shape for a dude that's doing every steroid. Like, I don't get it with him because he's like a fucking great looking dude. He's tall, he's jacked. Does he have a two inch? Like, what is it? Like, what the? I look at him compared to other 52 or 53 or even just any bodybuilder that's in their 50s, natural or not. And it's just like, you don't see guys hanging around doing the type of yeah. stuff he's doing that long. Where are the guys that he uh, competed against? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I've been always been un under the assumption that when you do a lot of steroids, like he said, every single steroid, it kind of ages you. It's, yeah. Promoting those duck eggs has now become, uh, it's now I mean, synonymous with yeah. him. Even though that is a blemish, I still think what he's doing is super impressive. I actually still believe he's natural. Performance enhancing drugs. What? <laughs> a steroid cannot kill you that I know of in a short period of time. The even the the way everything's being talked about, it's very like it's very nineties. Mm. You know, yeah, performance yeah. enhancing drugs. Mm -hmm. Like a witch hunt. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it, it's 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 a lot like that. Yeah. This is the thing though. But it's good. Them, it is good. It's good. And right, like okay. But what so, about your gut microbiome? <laughs> he was talking about like, oh, people used to smoke cigarettes and say it was good for your yeah. health, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then we find out lung cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, there are already people who are like artificial sweeteners are Satan. And although I don't think there's Satan, there's probably something wrong. Let's just say somewhere in the future, uh, Joel Green or somebody is like, guys, like, holy shit, like this new research shows that like they're actually pretty bad. They're so ingrained into everything that we will never hear about it. That yeah. person that figures that out will fucking disappear and artificial sweeteners will remain perfect for the rest of our lives. So drink up. <laughs> Just how do you? <laughs> yeah. How do you? <laughs> Hey guys, I want to talk to you about Merrick Health, owned by Derek from More Plates, More Dates. Now, some of you guys are on a fat loss journey, some of you guys are trying to gain muscle, and some of you guys are just trying to optimize yourself and your hormones. That's why Merrick Health is so great, because you can get your blood work done. A lot of us don't know what's going on under the hood as far as our cholesterol, our testosterone, our hormones are concerned, and you need to get that checked multiple times a year. That's why we've partnered with Merrick and we have something called the Power Project Panel, which has 28 different labs. And if you do get the Power Project Panel, they'll actually be able to partner you up with a patient care coordinator that will go through your labs with you and advise you on what you should do. So Andrew, how can they get it? Yeah, you guys got to head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. That's M-A-R-E-K Health.com slash Power Project. Uh, you guys will see the Power Project Panel. And when you guys check out, use promo code Power Project to save $101 off the entire panel links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes we don't even have, shit, no, we, we, don't even have we don't even have material and that was like material <laughs> that was stuff we could take to the stage probably no nah, we're talking about My this bad. we were we just were... tell us you're still not recording okay and then we'll have right, stuff me, that's actually hit, funny let me hit stop <laughs> i want everyone to reminisce back on the early days of instagram mm. when like you had really cringe shit like Every fitness influencer was hashtagging, what's up, my fit fam? <laughs> you know, time to go get in this work, hustle, you know, hustle. all that shit. Some people are still doing that shit. But Hashtag like, team no days off. Remember that? Mm, Hashtag yes. team no days off. Yeah, that was good Hashtag shit. blessed, I always like. Did you yeah. actually use hashtag blessed? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe as a, maybe as a joke. <laughs> I just think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, if you scroll back, it shit gets real cringy because, like, oh, I would, I would be like, great. Uh, what did I say? Like, awesome day at the hashtag gym. Got in a great hashtag leg sesh. Like, I wouldn't hashtag at the bottom. Yeah, it would just be throughout the whole post, just yeah. because I was like, oh, I don't want to do that bullshit. But hashtagging everything at the bottom. I'm at the Iron Church. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my god, man. I don't break bread. I'm breaking these weights. Yeah, the gym is your drug of choice. The gym is my drug of choice. I don't I don't drink, but I drink whey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know people who did that shit. And I, I, I I'm no better because if you go deep on my shit, mm. there is some I have some photos that I really should just archive. Mm -hmm. Fitness stuff is always just kind of <laughs> fitness stuff's always kind of fucked, you know, cuz yeah. like uh we're talking about stuff that we really enjoy. 
Yeah, that's true. You know, so like someone uh, saying that they're super dedicated because they uh, paint every day, but they're a painter. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. (laughs) I paint every morning, 5 a.m. It's like, well, that's what you love to do. You probably set your whole life up for that. It's just like we we did with lifting. I'm out here on a run and it's fucking 9,000 degrees like I posted the other day, right? Uh It's just stuff that we love to do. Yeah. This is what we like to do. We're meatheads. Yeah. We that's don't know funny. no better. It is motivating. I mean, something like no, but that it, it, it's funny. It's different, but it's motivating. But like it, sometimes mm-hmm. it's just. Sometimes I read certain captions, man. I'm just like, man, you don't realize how you sound. Mm, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know one person. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna say names. But I know. I know this person, and you go through your followers and, and figure it out. You you won't. I follow three thousand plus people. You won't figure it out. I'll figure it out. But when he talks about himself, he talks about himself in the third person. Oh. <laughs> oh. The Rock says, <laughs> <laughs> and some of his shit will be like, sometimes X wakes up in the morning and he's referring to himself. So let me just. I'm just going to use my name. Mm-hmm. Sometimes and Sima wakes up in the morning and he doesn't want to he doesn't want to work sometimes and sema feels tired you should do Some, that <laughs> sometimes in sema feels stressed but you know what in sema does he gets up he gets going he puts on his shoes he goes to the gym and he pumps it out because that's what winners do he liver does king. it anyway <laughs> liver king it's not liver king yeah, it is. no it's not liver king this is just this, he does this is though. literally a homie of mine that is a uh, that that it does the better. fitness stuff yeah. right and he has a good following too but i'm just like dog i literally i want to scratch myself <laughs> because it's so cringe like you don't ooh. Ooh, yeah. That's when you got to do like the unfollow, but the unfollow that they can't find out about, right? There's a way to do that or something. No, you can't. They will see. They like, oh. yeah. If people that but have you can those hide apps, their thing or something. You can you can, hide. Like, you can mute them. Yeah, and you yeah, can mute, mute them. when you do that. They can't figure it out, right? But so, I, I like not. I like reading this shit because it, it's like entertaining. It's mm-hmm. cringe, but it's also like, ooh, ah, you you really said that shit. Mm. You know, it's entertainment too. Mm-hmm. You know, but again. We are. I bet you I could find some cringy shit back in your old posts. Everything I do is cringy because I'm like out of touch with reality. Right? I'm fucking white and I'm rich and I'm, and I'm not getting any younger. God damn! So I don't know what the fuck's going on. Anymore. Oh, you just make it just reminds me of that when Amanda was here and you, you made that you made that comment on T. Oh yeah, T so, is dark though. I so know. Bad. At least you saved it by, yeah. by compared to Ben Patrick. Like oh, Ben yeah. Patrick is translucent. Yeah. That yeah, was good. Yeah, he's white yeah. as fuck. That was a good save. <laughs> Because for a second, I was like, oh, no, are we canceled? Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> oh, that shit was funny as fuck. But I do have a homie. Like, he, like in his household, he's Congolese, right? So. Just hanging. Oh, we're not talking actually, about <laughs> Actually, bro. <laughs> the Congolese, they got that reputation, They actually, right? yeah, statistically, they apparently have the biggest dicks. Nice. One time when we were 16 years old, this motherfucker, I was sleeping over at his house. I guess he knew he was fucking hanging. So I'm just chilling. Of course he does. I, I'm just chilling. He comes out of the doorway just like mm, naked and shit. I'm like, bro, like, dude. And this guy has a reputation of showing his like, dick dude, because he's... <laughs> come, hold on, come back for just a second. I'm like, wait a second. Holy shit, bro. Okay, well, okay let me okay. Take okay. a better look. For, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has a reputation for flashing people because he knows what he's got. And I'm just like, all right, you yeah. know what? Yeah, cool. You don't that's need to do that I, shit to me. That's what I always think, man. If someone's <laughs> really packing, like a lot of people are going to know about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Just got to figure out a way to slyly just whip Like if your it's shit. way out of the ordinary big, right? Like people are going to know. People yeah. are going to know. Oh, sorry. Whoops. My yeah. bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to dip Whoops. that in your butter. <laughs> 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 Oh my God. I love it. I love the way we start these podcasts, man. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. But we're, we're about just, to bring up a video of we're our gross. Favorite guy. We are gross. We are just disgusting. Oh, yeah. Man Crush good. Monday. Mm-hmm. Perpetual Man Crush Monday. For Mr. Mike O'Hearn. <laughs> guy's on so much trend. It's like, dude, just come forward and tell everybody there's no way to be that jacked and that handsome. And he's like 50 something years old, 53. Yeah. 53 bro we worked out with him the guy doesn't even train that hard he doesn't lift that heavy the form (laughs) is way off right i mean he makes everything look like a million pounds even though it's light just because he's doing drugs every day he doesn't really work out he does it all for the gram 
It's it's not real. It's all fake. He didn't even used to train before social media came. <laughs> he got into it because of social media. That's uh, why he lasts so long because he started training later. He just started. <laughs> and just started. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mix, you blend sense. that together with some good genetics. I mean, how much work is he really doing? Does he even have good genetics? Isn't it like kind of Photoshop? Because I remember mm. I stood next to him. Yeah, and you've made him look Made tiny. him look fucking ridiculously mm. small. Yeah. Mm. He's just, I, I don't know. These are all lies, by the way. <laughs> At least the, most yeah. of it. Yeah. He's no, strong. No, that's the real deal. He wakes up every morning uh, super fucking early, gets to the gym between 4 and 5 a.m., and he's been throwing down for... I don't know, forty something years of lifting. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's. I mean, yeah, he started when he was twelve or thirteen, and just never looked back. And he was big when he was young. He's still big. When he uh, won some of his natural uh, bodybuilding competitions or tested bodybuilding competitions many many years ago, mm-hmm. um, he looked almost the same as he does now. He yeah. he his physique. I guess it's changed changed a bit. Like you could say, he maybe got more dense. Like his mm-hmm. body's like thicker because he got more mature at some point. But he looks amazing. He, he looks amazing. And I think the the thing that always bugs me. So I understand how people can be frustrated uh, if somebody's lying, right? right. Because mm-hmm. it's we just don't we don't like that. Like we don't like being lied to. It's a little gra- formula, a little grass grassier. Yeah, do y'all do something different? I don't know. It tastes. It does taste different, right? It, you so you mm. yeah. I'm not tripping. Okay, mm-hmm. it tastes different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah, taste different. Yeah, we have these unlabeled kratoms laying around. Uh, but Wait, so I, is the unlabeled kratom different? Than I don't know. <laughs> they were just put in my office, and I was like, "This is this is great for sure. I'll take some of these." <laughs> I thought they were just. Sometimes they give me ones that have like messed up labels because <laughs> like we obviously don't want to sell those, and so I thought it was something like that, but I don't know. All right, well, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Maybe it's fucking like LSD or something. I don't know. <laughs> Kratom laced with psilocybin. Mm-hmm. That'd be interesting. But you were saying. Anyway, yeah, Mike has been crushing it for a long time. He's looked similar for a long time. So, you know, if he has been using stuff, he's been using it for, you know, decades, I guess. Um, but aside, aside from the steroid thing, because I, 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 I don't like the fact that in our society today, it seems like we pinpoint the problem that we have with somebody or with something, mm-hmm. and then everything about that person uh, gets dismissed or or missed in mm-hmm. some way. And uh, I saw this clip of Dan Bazarian and uh, uh, Derek. More, Derek from More Plates, More Dates talking about O'Hearn. And I'm just thinking like, you know, Derek didn't chime in too much, but I'm kind of thinking like both guys kind of, I think they both missed the point that like Mike... He trains really hard and really specifically for these re- these particular results. Yeah, um, and you can't take that part away from him. The steroid thing, I guess you can believe whatever you would you would like, uh, but what I what I believe is that when somebody is uh, showing some sort of miraculous feats of strength or physicality, mm-hmm. uh, especially with someone that's getting older, you know, starting to be like close to mid fifties. It's pretty fucking impressive, regardless of kind of how they're doing it. And let's not let's not completely scratch out all the facts about the guy waking up early every single day and training his face off for so many fucking years. Mm. Um, again, we don't like being lied to, so I can see how people could say, I, you know what, I don't like this part uh, about somebody, and and I don't know if I'm getting told the truth or not. Yeah. But the fucking guy, he puts the work in and he puts the time in regardless of whether he does take anything or not. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's 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 funny. Like when I look at Mike again, he's like 53, 52 or 53. I look at him compared to other 52 or 53 or even just any bodybuilder that's in their 50s, natural or not. And it's just like you don't see guys hanging around doing the type of yeah. stuff he's doing that long. Where are the guys that he uh, competed against? Right, you know, like you don't really see them. I mean, they're not, they're not on social media as much and stuff because they're not as jacked. They're probably not in the same shape. There might be a couple outliers out there, but Mm -hmm. we, I, I haven't really seen them. Yeah. So, despite what anyone may think about him, like one thing that has to be acknowledged is number one, the consistency over decades Mm -hmm. 
right? And he, <laughs> the weights he's moving is still impressive. The way he moves is still impressive. Um, he's he's made it a habit and a lifestyle because to this day the dude is getting up at four, going and training at Gold's Gym. Like that's his that's his habit. How is he not injured? How is he staying low body fat? I mean, he bulks and but he's still like when his yeah, average yeah. is still pr like probably ten or eleven percent. That's what he chills around. I mean, I know that I know that uh, performance enhancing drugs can assist with your body fat levels and stuff, but they don't eat for you. They don't make the decisions for you. They don't make the choices to. Uh, eat the way he eats. You mm -hmm. know, his a cheat meal for Michael Hearn is eating some fucking strawberries, pretty much. I mean, the guy is like he's super diligent. Anyway, let's let's uh, run this clip, and uh, we'll just check some. Of it. I don't think you guys even uh, had an opportunity to check it yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Okay, let me make sure I got the audio. There we go. Hearn guy, like oh, I eat duck eggs, and I'm just like more jacked and shredded than most of the guys <laughs> that are like fucking competing. The fucked up thing though is when he sells it too. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. It's like you need eighteen hundred bucks per like box of duck eggs. Like here's the thing, dude. Like you're fucking jacked in an amazing shape for a dude that's doing every <laughs> steroid. Like I don't get it with him because he's like a fucking great looking dude. He's tall. He's jacked. Does he have a two inch dick? Like what is it? Like what the fuck <laughs> yeah. is wrong? with yeah. you dude i don't get it man he's aging like incredibly dude, well give everything me too. that fucking guy's genetics yeah, man yeah. like please for the love of god i yeah. mean hats off much respect to him aside from like his fucking lying about his juice use which i think is like it's almost juice comical juice. at this point but the problem with it is like here's the thing man i don't give a fuck what you do the problem is like if you're mike o'hearn and you look like a fucking greek god at like 50 whatever the fuck he is like uh -huh. grandpa age and you're trying to tell people that you're natural it just like fucks up the confidence of a lot of guys this is fucking Michael. <laughs> it's an in interesting uh, commentary in so many different ways. Like at the end, he he's like uh, get, says, "Give me his genetics." Yeah. So then, which one is it? Is it the genetics? Is it the steroids? Or is it the combination? Like the guy's trying, jacked. trying yeah. to conjure up as many things as he can on why he doesn't look anything like that. Very good point. But also, like they they both said, like he looks good. And he's aging really well, and I I don't know maybe I'm wrong, but I've been always been un under the assumption that when you do a lot of steroids, like he said, every single steroid, it kind of ages you. It's, yeah, you know I've yeah. I've seen people where I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, that guy's probably like my age or maybe a little bit older, and then I get to know the person, and it's like you're 24. Oh fuck! Like how long have <laughs> you been running that. fucking trend for? Dude. You know, like, so in my experience, that has been the case. So it's, it, it is funny how he was like, he's on every single steroid, but then, oh, but he's aging well. So, uh, yeah, it, I don't know. It was almost like they were talking shit and they kind of wanted to give him a couple compliments and mm. then kind of went back to it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting because, um, the duck eggs thing, we, we can't skip over that. The duck eggs is bullshit. Mm. We, we know this, right? Does he still sell that? I don't, I don't think he does. I okay. don't think he does. You know what I, what I think is like a lot of, I wonder in what regard though, it would be bullshit. Like what was he, did he promote that? Like he specifically looks that way cause he eats duck eggs or he promoted that. Like, I think the duck, okay, we should, we should look up, but I'm pretty sure the duck eggs were promoted as a testosterone enhancing mm. supplement. Mm. Um, but I want us to make sure. So I don't misrepresent. What anything. about like uh Doucette and what about Derek? I think they hustle uh testosterone and they talk about, the impacts of that and how that works like a steroid. And yeah, duck mm -hmm. eggs, eighteen hundred dollars. Like this, this is the does thing. Does testosterone work like steroids? Some people think it does. I, I don't. I I don't. <laughs> I am buying it. Yeah, I don't think testosterone works. And like then that. I think both. I think well, one of the companies got found that like there wasn't testosterone in there. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but duck eggs again. <laughs> not like. Yeah. But this is the thing. Back in I guess maybe years ago. Um, a lot of companies, when they started doing influencer marketing, I don't know the what happened with Mike, but like some people get offered a lot of money to mm -hmm. say this right. or mm -hmm. I take this. And even in magazines back in the early days, these bodybuilders would be like, my whey protein made me huge. Mm -hmm. And now people are smarter and they understand how these things work. So maybe it was a mishap or a, uh, I would say, you know, it's probably a mistake on his part um, because now that that working and and promoting those duck eggs has now become uh it's now I mean, synonymous with yeah. him mm -hmm. perpetually for the rest of time everyone will think of duck eggs when they think of yeah. uh him but at the end of like i still even though that is a blemish i still think what he's doing is super impressive and i actually still believe he's natural mm -hmm. um because of how long he's been doing this and because of what he looked like when he was younger like 
most people do not make things habitual like he has. And on the show, over everything we do, like there's a lot of products we use. Um, we use a mattress to help us sleep better. We use barefoot shoes. There's a lot of products we use. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing that allows us to continue progressing and continue making progress are the habits that we put in on a daily basis. The habits that Mike has put in on a daily basis, mm -hmm. he has shown it, we have seen it, you can't deny it, right? Right. And others just haven't been able to do it like he has. I've been on steroids for a long time, I don't look like him, <laughs> you know? I, you know, I just don't. And uh, there could be many reasons why, but um, I think that he outworks me. You know, when it comes to lifting, he loves lifting. He love, you know, we've, we've trained with him. I think that's the other thing too. So like, I'm always going to defend him. Uh, I've been friends with him for a long time and I've lifted with him many times. And I've yeah. seen like, he's like taught me a lot of stuff. We share a lot of stuff. So we're, we're friends. So of course I'm going to, uh, you know, defend him in some ways. But again, as far as the steroid thing goes, I, I don't know. I don't really know whether he does them or doesn't do them. Uh, that's not really my main concern. My main concern is the fact that, once somebody hears something negative about somebody, they throw everything else out. And I just don't think that's a good idea. Like you pointed out the habits, like there's a lot of great habits. There's a lot of great things. Can you still learn how to get bigger arms from Mike O'Hearn? Yeah. yeah, you can. And you don't need to take steroids if that's something that he does. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, I think we miss out on a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. And you know, I mean, Dan's cool and all. And Number one, I, I probably would assume that Dan doesn't work out as much as Mike does. Even though Dan's in great shape, he has said he takes certain things. But his focus is making money and fucking a lot of girls. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But he does not outwork Mike. He does not probably do the same amount of fitness as, as Mike has at all. Like, not even fucking close. So when he mentioned, like, you know, you're putting this false whatever in, in so many people's minds, right? It's just like, ah, dude. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> this dude's like has millions of dollars and he always has 10, 20 women hanging around him. When a young man sees that, mm -hmm. is that something that most men are going to be able to achieve? No. Is it a good confidence booster for people? Is it a good confidence mm -hmm. booster for people? Unless you are a guy who is attractive and making potential millions and you have some sort of way to be of benefit to all these different hot women, um, are guys going to be able to achieve that? No, but guys are consistently looking and liking Dan shit mm -hmm. and saying, that's so badass, I want that. But guys, most of y'all, 99.9% .9 of the men watching his content will not be able to get anywhere close to that type of lifestyle. So... <laughs> This whole, you're putting yeah. weird things into the minds of young men, dog, you're doing the same shit in a mm -hmm. potentially worse fucking way. <laughs> it makes no sense. Right. And I think it's safe to say like the, that statistic about the 99.9% .9 of the demographic can't be a millionaire and do all that shit. Out of, I would say it's the same statistic for b looking like Michael Hearn at 53. Looking at Michael. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the thing. This is the thing. Now let's let's look at Mike's habits. Let's look at the thing he does. Mm -hmm. If any person were to just take the habits of what he does and put them into their life for a good period of time, would they look substantially better and be substantially mm -hmm. healthier? Of course. Yes. If people were to take the habits of Dan Bilzerian and apply that to their lifestyle, would they get anywhere? Like, may, you know, I don't know his background. I know he has a lot of money. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how he made all his money. Yeah. I know that he works with a lot of women, but. I'm, yeah, I don't think he really outwardly teaches it. Doesn't teach it. He, that, he, that actually has a, he has a book where mm -hmm. he's talked about like his life and he's mm -hmm. talked about how like there are aspects of what he does that he doesn't even think is good, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, it's like, who was probably of healthier benefit to pay attention into, into their daily habits? Who's healthier? Who's the person to really maybe pay attention to for mm -hmm. motivation? Probably Mike. Well, especially because Mike <laughs> is sharing that information, yeah, you know? So Dan, yeah. from my understanding and from what I've seen, I don't think he shares that that often. And maybe if he did, maybe he would be of equal benefit in some way because maybe he's got a lot of great things to say. He probably does. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that Dan yeah. Bazzani does have a lot of things, great things to say because he's definitely figured out a way to make tons of money. Um, and he's and everyone wants to make more money right and he's found a way to um you know be of benefit to women in terms of their social media so that they all come and hang out with him and take mm -hmm. pics with him and probably fuck him right, right. so <laughs> any guy who's looking for that could probably get some good tips from dan for that shit uh so i'm not saying he doesn't have great things to say but i'm just like 
the, the, the whole thing of like, oh, he's putting false expectations. Like, dog, you are doing the same shit in a potentially worse way. Mm-hmm. Let's, not, let's, not, let's not go down that route. I don't know. I just, I always find a lot of this stuff to be super interesting because I, I don't know what's right. You know, I don't know. Like, um, Jordan was sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know. Like, is mm-hmm. that, but if McDonald's was going to give any one of us, you know, some crazy amount of money. Um, I like the chicken nuggets. Well, he, yeah, I, lo- <laughs> I, lo- I love McDonald's. It's amazing. <laughs> so that that's what we could say is like, hey, this is something that you, you know, this is something that you might do on occasion. Like go to McDonald's, it's fucking tastes good. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's kind of hard to like always put like morals into every little thing. Sometimes um, I don't even, I'm not even fully aware of like what Mike did with the, the duck eggs, but. Did you find that or no? I, I it's kind of old now, so I wasn't able to find much other than just people talking shit about it okay. and it costing seven hundred dollars mm-hmm. <laughs> for a carton. That's really interesting because I wonder what the deal is with those particular duck eggs. Because duck eggs are like they're at stores and they're not expensive. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> Mike's mm-hmm. potentially going to be here soon, so mm-hmm. we're going to be able to talk about a lot of stuff. And duck eggs do have cholesterol. And cholesterol is the backbone of testosterone, mm-hmm. so maybe he's got a point. Maybe Amen. we can all start to eat some duck <laughs> eggs and get jacked. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> hey, you give me some duck eggs for free, I'll for sure eat that shit. That's right. <laughs> For free though, it was so funny. I was telling Owen what I eat for breakfast. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, I eat like ten eggs, and then you know, I kept going, and he's like, wait, what? I was like, what? He's like, you eat ten eggs, and I was like, yeah. He's like, like egg and like the yolk and the white and everything. I'm like, yes, dude, with four slices of toast, and he like was blown away, and and then he's like, uh, and then I was talking about like getting like B roll for this video that we're doing. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, but I, I don't even care about the B roll. I just want to see it. Uh-huh. I was like, it's not that much, dude. Like, it's pretty easy to get through now. And you poach those things, right? Like, uh, uh, Yeah, sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess that's one way to do it. One thing I've never been able to really get over is like, I have a limit for how many runny eggs I can eat. It's like, mm. after I eat four or five, mm. I start to feel nauseous. They're good. And then they just start to feel like slop. I do eat and them I just with, can't get over that. With <laughs> toast, it helps. With toast, because you can swipe the slop up. Yeah, it's so good with that. Yeah. Just p- dump salt everywhere. They st- it starts to get heavy on your stomach after a bit. It does. Right? It really does. Yeah, 10's the limit right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see what let's happens. Let's check out the uh, the Navy SEALs being on PEDs. You have that clip? Yeah, I had it. Fuck, lost this it. I'll find it. so interesting. So full disclosure, I also didn't, like, I saw it, but I wasn't able to watch it. Mm. So this will be good to see, but yeah. I mean, fuck, if anyone's going to be on uh, on some shit, one on our armed forces. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. an odd... You know, yeah, let's wait for the clip because I don't want to say anything before. But um, there's another interesting thing about, you know, them mentioning that Mike is aging well. So, like, that, you know, if he if he is on stuff, low dose of tests, if he is on stuff and he is lying about it, I mean, it's just can he share how good, like, how he's doing such a good (laughs) job with it? It's just more more promotion for um, PEDs. Okay. Well, damn. Oh, you just went to the end. Oh, did I? Yes. No way. Oh, yeah. You hit you hit the button. Oh, this is what I'm looking for. Here we go. Here we go. Tonight, the new report alleging widespread use of performance-enhancing drugs among <gasps> trainees months Ooh, after wow. a SEAL candidate what? died shortly after completing what's called Hell Week. Here's Martha Raddatz. Tonight, the Navy's most elite unit, the SEALs, rocked by allegations that candidates trying to complete its infamous Hell Week are using performance-enhancing drugs. What? <laughs> the investigation beginning after 24-year-old Kyle Mullen died just hours after finishing the grueling course last February. The New York Times says in the course of the investigation, the Navy discovered syringes and performance-enhancing drugs in his car and later discovered about 40 candidates had either tested positive or had admitted using steroids or other drugs in violation of Navy regulations. Mullen's autopsy concluded he died from bacterial pneumonia and did not have drugs in his system at the time of death. His mother, Regina Mullen, adamant that while he'd considered it, he did not use drugs. Could have been from the other man that he was hanging out with, unfortunately. The Navy SEAL trainees have a far higher death rate than other special operations forces, and now the investigation into alleged drug use is one more demoralizing and dangerous development. I wonder, you know, over the years, how many people have died 
you know, I, I would just guess that they've had many people die uh, from that kind of training. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. imagine like just probably within a, a couple of weeks after, I would imagine that some people die. Like that's, that training is really hard. There's a lot of people that uh, will push and push and push and go as hard as they can. And maybe they change some of the regulations and how they do it nowadays versus the way they used to do it. But I would imagine there's probably, unfortunately, a lot of people have died from that kind of training. Yeah, it's super hard training. And if someone isn't prepared, like if the body isn't prepared for that, yeah. he Apparently he died of bacterial pneumonia. But the thing that's really odd is the, that, the military isn't allowed to use performance enhancing drugs yeah because they're they're the military these right. like <laughs> these people need to be in fucking combat so mm -hmm. if there's if there's anyone that we want to have the super soldier serum in mm -hmm. it's gonna be those guys but an aspect that they were talking about in terms of oh the, all these guys tested positive it's like i think if if they have some education on how to do this stuff safely mm -hmm. for these guys right man, I want an enhanced military. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and testosterone is supposed to be pretty like good for concussions and uh, PTSD and, and just your mental health and all kinds of things. Um, you know, interestingly enough, I you know, they talked about there was PEDs found, you know, in the car. I, I just kind of wonder, like, what they would be, you know, because if, like, a steroid, a steroid cannot kill you that I know of in a short period of time. Steroids can kill you over, over time um, because they can do things like raise your blood pressure. Um, they can, uh, it, it appears that like in large dosages, it could be bad for your organs, including mm -hmm. like your heart and things like that. Um, but you could take an entire bottle of testosterone, tw 10 ml, 20 ml, and shoot it, and the worst thing that might happen to you is you might get like just really fucked up from the, all the oil mm. that you shot, and that would be painful. It would hurt, but it certainly wouldn't kill you. Um, and even if it was trenbolone, and even if it was uh, any other steroid that I'm familiar with, uh, in terms of anabolic steroids, there's not an amount that I think you could take that would kill you. Oral steroids, you might be able to take so much that it's like so toxic to your body that you could potentially die from that. But what's the difference? Why? Uh, just because they're they're pills, you know. And like, um, fuck, man, I just think if you take way too many pills of of anything, you could potentially fuck yourself up. Okay. Um, the difference also is with oral steroids. Supposedly, they have to pass through your liver mm -hmm. multiple times uh, due to the way that they break down, and so it could be uh, have more liver toxicity to it. Okay. But again, like that would be like really far fetched. I don't even understand any mechanisms that would happen uh, in those terms. But the, if there were PEDs and PEDs were at play and it was something that, uh, I don't know, contributed to the death in some way, um, it would have to be like EPO or something like that. Like, you know, something that's for uh, respiratory, something that's for like, you know, uh, enhancing endurance or something like that. Yeah, I wish they could have, I mean, I know it's the news and yeah. they can't really give specifics, but I would like to know what they actually did find. Because like, you're right, maybe they did find EPO and they'd be like, oh shit, okay, well that does make some sense. Mm -hmm. But if it was test, I'd be like, mm, okay, that, that definitely wasn't it. Because yeah, uh, I'd rather shoot an entire bottle of test than like take an entire bottle of like uh, Tylenol, right? Like yeah. that shit would fuck me up. Um, yeah, even caffeine. The caffeine yeah, can, can be yeah. more like you take large dose caffeine. I'm not saying the steroids aren't, they don't, they're not without problems. They mm -hmm. certainly can be with tons of problems. But uh, to like, kill you in a day you know would would be really because like i'm imagining that this guy is like probably just on like a cycle he's a young guy it doesn't look like he from the picture it doesn't look like he's mm -hmm. using tons of steroids or has a history of using tons of steroids so even if he did it for a few weeks it's just not enough to do much of anything unless he was messing around with like insulin or epo or something like that mm -hmm. and i definitely don't want to sound heartless or you know no, it's a tragedy, uh, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, the report that we just watched, somebody lost their life, and then we're talking about our fucking military men. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people that are putting their neck on the line for us to be able to fucking have a dope podcast right now. But it just, it seems a little silly to me to be like, oh, you can't, you can't take PEDs, but here's this gun, uh, <laughs> go protect, you know, us or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it just, it seems so lopsided. It just... 
yeah, it's weird that they were like were rocked is what the uh, the title of the article was. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the even the the way everything's being talked about, it's very like it's very nineties. Mm. You know, yeah. performance yeah. enhancing drugs. Mm-hmm. Like a witch hunt. <laughs> yeah, right. It, 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 it's 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 a lot like that. Yeah. But you know, it's it is a complicated type of thing because okay. I, I think it would be great if people in the military could use PEDs in a safe manner that would keep, like that would improve them and keep it like keep everything healthy because number one like hell week these guys are getting deprived of sleep like all the things that mm-hmm. are supposed to help you recover the mm-hmm. individuals are getting deprived of and many of them may have never been deprived of something like this in their entire life so they they probably don't even know how to handle that stress but mm-hmm. that's some of them right yeah. um, but. You know, the thing that we're seeing on our on our fitness side of things in the fitness industry is young guys fucking 16, 17, 18 and shit on TikTok uh, true, that are yeah. that are like hopping on shit, right? And it's like I think it would be great if we could give PEDs and it would be legal for people in the military and maybe legal in general. But th- there's aspects of where especially when people want to, you know, change their bodies fast, they don't implement all the habits and things that we continue to talk about mm-hmm. that are going to make the biggest difference. Mm-hmm. They immediately go to the supplements, the drug, the thing that will make it fast. And therein lies the risk. Therein lies the the, the risk of the individual because people don't want to take time with this type of shit. People want it now. And if I can just take more drugs to get it now, that's where shit goes bad, especially with the general population. The people that don't have the habits will be very disappointed in the impact of steroids. They would be very disappointed. They'd be like, what? I thought this was going to do so much more for me. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have the habits and you're already into it, then you're really pleased with it. You're like, oh, okay, this is this is, this is is kind of neat. Like, This is really cool. I can't believe my body's responding like this. It's it's uh, newbie gains all over again. And it's, it's very like, it's actually exciting and it's fun. Mm-hmm. And you, you're encouraged to go to the gym because you're like, I'm getting a little bigger and a little stronger, like fucking often. So this this is uh, this is uh, incredible. Uh, I would say again, I believe what's at fault here. If there is a fault, like I just think that potentially the training is probably what ran him down and probably what made him sick in the first place. Like probably made him very vulnerable. We know that deprived sleep can sometimes lead to. I mean, it can lead to all kinds of stuff. That's how we get sick a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Something's off in the body, and uh, we become something because there's shit flying around all the time mm-hmm. bacteria is flying around all the time um we're disgusting you know we're touching each other and Very there's disgusting. shit in the air mm-hmm. and there's like all kinds of stuff going on so normally the body under normal circumstances can handle all that we could process it if Nsema blows up the bathroom here andrew and i as long as we got our sleep we don't have to get ill from it yes mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah yeah and i did blow up that bathroom it was a close call yesterday it's oh. like hey time the podcast he's like got a shit it's, you know, that's, I think, I, I don't know. Remember it's wh- like Pavlov's dog or whatever, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Every single time whenever I was getting ready to do a big <laughs> squat, it, and there was never a single time I could do a mm-hmm. big squat without having to take a dump. And it's like every single time we're about to podcast, I stand right here. I'm like, I'm ready. And then I'm like, all right, give me five minutes, guys. <laughs> Let's go get this out. I don't know. Yeah, it is like a Pavlov's dog thing. My body knows. Yeah, my coffee in the morning is kind of funny because I don't even have to drink it. You just got to look at it. Yeah, I just, I put the, I just get the coffee in the cup and I like leave it there for a minute and I usually go outside for a minute and I walk back in and I kind of smell the coffee and I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, I got to take a shit. You know, that's funny that something similar happened to me this morning. (laughs) I I normally have like some like allergy medicine and a couple like D3, a couple of vitamins here and there that I take with uh, some electrolytes. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, it's like, fuck dude, I got to get to the bathroom pretty quick. This morning, I didn't. I just I skipped that, and I had to go to the bathroom really bad. And then, like, I didn't even think about it. Like, it wasn't even like, like I got to the kitchen. And I'm like, oh shit! I skipped a whole step before I took a dump. Like, yeah. I guess I don't need it as bad as I thought I did. You know what I mean? Quick sidetrack, yo. I'm uh, more actually, than that. <laughs> you gotta poop again? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't even poop again. I was just thinking about this. Um, you know, this whole all these like, artificial sweeteners and diet soda and shit. Yeah, how they're right? killing us. <laughs> you would never drink that. No, uh, I drink. You, y'all know you're I drink super diet natty. Soda. Y'all know I drink diet soda. But, you're drinking um, filtered water in that mug right now. There's no artificial sweeteners in there at all. People talking trash on us while they're sipping on their BCAAs and uh, <laughs> all kinds of shit in it too, right? <laughs> but I was thinking, you know how like um, I I've 
I'm definitely drinking more diet soda than I should be, even though it's <laughs> zero calorie. Like that's the difference. That's why he looks so flat, Andrew. Remember yeah. you were commenting, you were like, "Man, he's really looking like garbage." Mm-hmm. It's the artificial sweeteners eating away at you slowly. Yeah, but man, even though it's a great <laughs> substitute, it is a great substitute because I will never drink a full sugar soda. Right? I'm not going to drink my calories yeah, like that. I agree. Like I truly need to back off of the amount of diet soda I drink. I don't think it's good. It's not good. It's not nah, good. You're fine. The other night, bro, I had fucking oh god, I hate to admit this. A whole two liter, and then I, mm, n- oh, I've done that mm-hmm. before. A fresca, yeah, great diet soda. There's a new flavor out there too. You guys see that one? There's new oh, fresca shit, flavor. New There's shit on new- the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never seen both of you guys so excited before. <laughs> Wait, but is there? What is it? Uh, there's a new Coke Zero, and oh, uh, okay. it's like uh, limited edition what? from. Uh, the artist Marshmallow, which I don't know who that is, but me neither. Um, I see this? Shit. I think that's what mm-hmm. it's called. And it's is that who that is? Because I've been seeing those fucking costumes like a it's lot like of the past few cherry years. Cherry lime or something. And but the the bottle is uh, the can. Oh. Wow. So look, the can is white, but I'm so dumb. I th- it said like marshmallow on there, so it's I'm not like, oh, well, it's white, it's like a marshmallow. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I taste it. I'm like. That don't taste like no marshmallow. And I look at the can, I'm like, oh, fat. it's a di- different flavor. It tastes good, though. Yeah, it's really good. They, they, What's they, the flavor on there? What does it say? They should have eat, at least in like a like a cream soda because uh, like the marshmallow. Uh, this did, podcast is sponsored Coca-Cola. by Coca-Cola. No, it's not. <laughs> you mad, dude, we don't have a Coke I wish. By Coke Zero. Um, it doesn't say. I think it's just. It says it's it somewhere weird. on that can. It's just regular, bro. No, it's no, no, it's not regular. Zero it's calorie Coke Zero. Like, underneath the red, maybe. Anything? No, no, no. Watermelon strawberry. There flavor. we go. Watermelon strawberry. They did strawberry. nail. They did nail that watermelon flavor. Now I think about it. I'm gonna go load up. Okay, this is the thing. Though. But All it's good. Them. It is good. It's good. <laughs> and re- like, okay. But what so, about your gut microbiome, <laughs> dog? Yeah, I think uh, I've definitely taken it too far. And for everyone oh. in the audience, because we talked about diet sodas. Just do your best not to go too wild with it because, uh, you know, think about like we were talking about this on the podcast the other day with Gary, right? He was talking about like, oh, people used to smoke cigarettes and say it was good for your yeah. health, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then we find out lung cancer. Mm-hmm. Well, there are already people who are like artificial sweeteners are Satan. And although I don't think they're Satan, there's probably something wrong mm-hmm. there in terms of consuming an insane amount of it. So I know that I need to constrict my diet soda use Mm -hmm. i need to lower it i'm just just suggestion for any of you who were like me who may have been overdoing your diet soda let's pull it back a little bit i mean if you think about something like alcohol it it's it's a known poison yeah like it it poisons your body right (laughs) and uh we could sometimes just think about these chemicals there's like chemicals that are going into our body and how many of those do you want but we can't avoid a lot of them. You know, there are a lot of them are just, they're everywhere, whether you get organic or grass fed or mm-hmm. whatever thing you try to get that's fancy schmancy. Uh, it's fucking shit everywhere. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say about the uh, artificial sweeteners is, uh, let's just say somewhere in the future, uh, a fucking Joel Green or somebody is like, guys, like, holy shit, like this new research shows that like they're actually pretty bad. They're so ingrained into everything that we will never hear about it. That yeah. person that figures that out will fucking disappear and artificial sweeteners will remain perfect for the rest of our lives. So drink up. <laughs> Just how do you? <laughs> yeah. How do you? <laughs> how do you mitigate some of this stuff? And if you think about like if I can just manage my body weight and I can manage my diet, mm-hmm. um, then I think that's pretty good because, like, if one of the biggest problems here in the United States is people like overeat, yeah, um, and people have excess body fat, and then we also run into people losing muscle as they get older. People having some body fat on them when they're younger uh, doesn't seem to be like nearly as negative, but what happens over time is you get heavy. And you get weaker because you start to lose muscle mass, and that's when somebody gets laid out. They they have an ankle thing, they have a knee thing, the joints, ligaments, tendons start to wear out, and that's mm-hmm. when somebody really, that's when it all goes downhill for somebody. That's what happened with my mother. She was heavy most of her life. Um, when she was young, she was very healthy, even though she was a, a bigger woman her whole life. Um, but as she got older and some joints and stuff like that started to wear out, yeah. once that activity went away, once the movement went away, um, it was unfortunately it was just like a, a slow a slow death from there. So I think 
you know, huge concern for people is just how do I, how do I stay a similar weight? And it's not always about losing weight. Uh, how do I stay like a similar weight or how do I start to lose some weight and then just manage, like just fucking stay in there? Dude, that's, that's huge. You know, the whole healthy at every size thing, as beautiful as the movement is in terms of accepting who you are and being not, not killing yourself and mentally fucking with yourself because you don't have an ideal body, whether you're overweight or obese. Most of the people that report like, oh yeah, my blood works great and I'm healthy because my blood work are younger, overweight and obese people. But when individuals mm. be get older, the older overweight and obese people always come back with the bad blood work, with mm. the degenerated joints, because things just don't tend to go that well as you age if you're overweight and obese and you keep going in that direction. So if you're younger, be happy, love who you are. You're be happy about it. be happy about who you are and love yourself but maybe try heading in the direction of building some healthy habits right um so that when you're older you have way less things to worry mm. about i agree mm -hmm. yeah maybe love yourself but don't celebrate it i guess i yeah. don't know it's, it's hard to put it into words because i do think that the um like the you know like what we were just talking about like body acceptance or whatever i think it's the one positive that I can think of right now, I'm not saying there's only one, but the one that I can think of is like, because there's people that I know that are always like, oh, I wish I could lose weight. I'm not happy with who I am right now. Mm -hmm. But none of the habits change. So at least if you can be like, okay, just love who you are. That's fine. That's cool. But if you want to improve, all right, cool, let's do it. But don't sit there and beat yourself up because you don't look like, you know, whoever the fuck you think the ideal body type is. Um, so I think that can be one thing. But like you said, just start doing the simple habits like Man. you know don't beat yourself up but also don't think that you're gonna get that ideal body type without actually doing something how <laughs> roger family how's it going now we love these fucking legendary tasty pastries and love you already them. know how good they are but i want a hot tip for you i want to give you a hot tip number one hot hot heat when you eat these things 20 grams of protein five grams of net carbs put it in the microwave for 15 seconds all right we talked about how it can fit any single diet because it's high protein very low carb but if you put it in the microwave for 15 seconds, my fucking God, it will, <laughs> it will melt in your mouth. I highly suggest you could do this with any flavor, but if you can get your hands on the hot fudge sundae, oh, <laughs> baby, Andrew, you're the one yeah. who put me on this shit, man. Yes, seriously, you guys have to try this, but please do not microwave it for more than 15 seconds because the inside turns nuclear. But to me, this tastes like an old school chocolate donut. For some reason, when you microwave it, it completely changes the flavor and it changes it for the better. But you guys got to head over to eatlegendary.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Again, that's at eatlegendary.com. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to this podcast. Andrew, is there any way... Possibly. Without me... If, maybe I have to email it, but remember those Abercrombie images I pulled up for you? Oh, yeah, I can day? find it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because they got pulled, right? They got pulled. Yeah, Abercrombie took their post down. I know Sean Baker posted about it. To give you guys just a quick... Um, a quick rundown while Andrew's looking some of this up. Abercrombie and Fitch, and I never got to watch the Netflix documentary they did on them. Oh, that's pretty fun. You did? You watched yeah, it? Cool, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, Abercrombie and Fitch, I used to work there when I was a fucking, that was my first job. <laughs> but Abercrombie and Fitch was this company who's like always been about being young, hot, blonde, and blue eyed. Mm. And maybe sprinkle some black in there. But <laughs> <laughs> Abercrombie is a company that's always been known to like be like really, you know, you got to be a certain size. They never had like bigger clothing and their marketing was all six packs and, mm -hmm. you know, sexy girls. Uh, people hated that shit. A lot of shit happened. But they recently did an ad and it wasn't even really an ad. They did a Facebook post. Cool. Andrew, you have it. A Facebook post. And this was one of the bodies that was shown on that post. But you know the fucked up thing? This isn't an Abercrombie model. This is one of the customers that purchased oh. some Abercrombie clothing. Mm. And what they did is, and this is the picture that everyone's showing, but they also showed some other women who were not as heavy. Like they showed women of different sizes wearing Abercrombie. She's not a model for them. She's a customer that bought some of their clothing and she posted about it. And yeah, there you go. There are the other models that they showed, right? And not even models though. These are just random women. Like fans, basically. They're yeah. fans. And yeah. Abercrombie was like, you know, they're, they're probably overcorrecting because of what they used to do. But all they did was show a, mm. a it's weird because people took that, that blonde girl, and they're mm. like, oh, they're glorifying being obesity, blah, blah, mm. blah. 
but it's just a girl that bought some Abercrombie clothes. That's like, mm. I like the way I'm feeling myself right now. Mm. Yeah. And then they put it up. <laughs> I would say that company definitely knew what they were doing by putting they, that forward. Mm-hmm. You know, they, yeah. they knew some of the result that they would get uh, off of that. <clears throat> you know, something I always find interesting is like, um, and, and I certainly don't know how to dress myself either, but like, I find it interesting the type of clothing that certain people wear sometimes i'm like that's just not not flattering for them Mm -hmm. um so that first picture of the blonde girl like the 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 choice of clothes like it just doesn't look great like i don't know why i'm not sure why someone would dress that way there's a flattering aspect up top if we're being like if if somebody were just looking at the Mm -hmm. the first third of the picture like right right it's like okay boobies right Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're right and and i know that people are like hey well she should be able to wear whatever she wants and i'm not saying that she can't wear that i'm just Mm -hmm. saying that uh you know and i guess it's just my eyes and and my (laughs) thoughts like i don't if when i was heavier i didn't wear stuff that was real tight yeah i didn't wear stuff that was real short you know i would cover certain things certain ways and just try to make sure that uh even though i probably didn't look good or great no matter what i did i would still you know just try to I guess make sure I'm more comfortable, but I guess if she's comfortable wearing that, then go for it. But it's like those shorts are like insanely short, and then there's just like a lot of chub going on around it. So I don't. <laughs> again, I'm just uh, I'm fascinated by people's yeah. like clothing choices sometimes. That is, it is very interesting because I've you don't see many you don't see many men who are obese, right? Um, you don't see them wearing really tight fitting clothing and that mm-hmm. type of stuff, but. As far as women, there is there has been an uptick of like you know. It, but this is the thing though. This is the this is the rough part because there is the aspect of like oh we don't want to. People are like oh don't glorify this. But again, she's not one of their models. She's just a fan that managed to buy some of their clothing because now they make clothing for bigger people. It seems like the angle of that picture like there's some like it seems like there's a lot of so- shit. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of shit going on with that particular mm-hmm. photo. You know, mm-hmm. and the, the way that the, the you can see the legs in there and stuff. Yeah. Whereas uh, <clears throat> the picture of the black woman, she looks very pretty. But that's just because just she chose the picture she wanted it's to It's a use. different picture, yeah. And it's yeah. it's a... Uh, but, like, that seems more appropriate to wear. I, I don't know. Who am I the fuck to, to mm-hmm. say what's appropriate? Oh, so you're... But, okay. I see you know what, what I mean? Like, I mean, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But, like, man, like... You go on Instagram, girls be having their asses out. So oh, it's yeah. like, it's just mm-hmm. like who girl, whatever girl yeah, chooses yeah. to have their ass out or whatever guy chooses to have their shirt off and their fucking five inch inseam shorts. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like soon to be three, <laughs> soon to be three. But, but this is the thing the the confusing aspect about all of this is that there's one side where people are like, oh, models are too skinny, unhealthy, blah, blah, blah. There's another side where it's the extreme. Oh, these people are too big, blah, blah, blah. But people who are overweight or obese it is great that companies are now actually making clothes that fit those people Mm -hmm. because guess what? There are a lot of people, most people in America are now overweight and obese. They need clothes, right? And I mean, it's a great move as far as business to provide clothes for bigger people because like that's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So so Mm -hmm. that's one thing. But number two is like, if someone's trying to get in better shape, they need fucking clothes to wear to get in better shape. Mm-hmm. And if they want to fucking rock some Lululemon, Viore, or Abercrombie and Fitch, it'd be nice if those sizes were offered for those people who are, some may not be trying to change, but some might be. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's like, if you can just shift your perspective sometimes, get out of the butt. Like, I think sometimes if, since we're so focused on fitness and being fit, we have this ideal that we're like, yeah, like being fit is good. And that's great. But if you put yourself in just the perspective of someone who is overweight or obese, and maybe they want to be on that journey, and you just think about how they look at everything, it's like, it's great to be able to see that a place has clothes that fit you Mm -hmm. while you're heading down this. So sometimes we just need to take ourselves out of the fucking equation and and just be like, other people are trying to do the same shit you are. That, it's... It's weird. And then it's hard from a company perspective to like, how many X's high do you go? How mm. how big of a size do you go up? You know? Um, and everything's not for everybody. Like it's, there's, uh, things aren't really that equal, you know? Like where do, where can I shop for a pair of seven X leather pants? <laughs> big and tall. <laughs> like, so, sorry, like they, they, they ain't got them, you know? Like they probably don't exist. Mm-hmm. You know, you want leather pants, you're probably going to have to lose some weight. Yeah. Sometimes that's just the way life is. Like there's some things that are unfair sometimes and you got to, 
maybe try some new shit like we recommend often on the show. I think that people that are heavier, I think that lifting weights plays right into their hands because it doesn't mm -hmm. require, um, it doesn't require some things that you may need if you're going to like run or you're going to uh, investigate like more extreme movements or somebody that's a bigger person that's been a bigger person most of their life, they actually, a lot of times they'll find out that they're actually fairly strong and they actually have a pretty good uh, muscular system on their body from carrying around that weight for years. So a lot of people that are heavier, it would be amazing if they investigated uh, going into the gym and, and lifting some weights. I realize how hard that can be for people because, you know, getting over the fear of going into the gym. So maybe you start out and you buy a kettlebell that you have at your house and you start lifting that or, or whatever way you can figure out uh, some type of resistance training. I have a question for both of you guys. Does getting a new shirt or a new pair of shorts and it looks fucking good on you, does that kind of motivate you? Does that make you feel good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, having new clothes and, and feeling good and, and at least feeling like you look good, yeah, it feels amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If if I'm wearing a pair of shorts, like we've joked around, oh, we've joked about this, I think on the podcast about like, like, oh, my shorts ain't short enough now. But like if I have a pair that like, if I sit down and I stand up and they like lock on my quads, like fuck yeah i'm like that's right it's working <laughs> like you know i feel good exactly and this is the thing that i think is like a it's a tough thing where people in fitness kind of need to just potentially zone out a little bit if i was overweight or obese i want to look good while i'm on my journey like i mm -hmm. i know like mm -hmm. we all know how exciting it is to find the shirt that fits us just right for mm -hmm. our build and now we're like fuck i want to i'm gonna fucking go in the gym or i feel like going on a jog in my fucking right. right it feels good and with this percentage of people that are overweight and obese in the united states now who are like i have i want to go on that journey and some of them in the past, maybe they haven't had clothing options that mm -hmm. allowed them to look mm -hmm. good. But now companies are finally starting to make some bigger clothes for those people. If they get in a pair of shorts and a tank top or, or a shirt or something and they're like, fuck, this is this stretch as well. I'm feeling good. That feel good. My uncle always used to say, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you work good or something mm -hmm. like that. And People having options, overweight and obese people having options of clothing that makes them feel and look good to motivate them to get more active, that is something that is necessary. <laughs> like it, it's it's just it's just necessary. It's motivating. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, men don't ever talk about it, but it's like you mm. you feel sexy. Hell yeah! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like hell yeah! Especially like when you you know when you lose weight, you like if you're real heavy, you, uh -huh. you're like man. Uh, you blame it on the store. You blame it on the fit. You're like, man, none of this stuff like fits right. This place is stupid. <laughs> you fucking and you go out of there and you don't buy anything. But when you're in, when you're lean and in good shape, or uh, yeah. even just in better shape than what you've been before, yeah. you're like, God damn, I gotta buy the whole store. <laughs> I gotta buy all ten of these fucking things. So everything looks great. Yo, do you know how excited I was in my early twenties when Levi finally came out with five four ones? Mm -hmm. Levi five four to fit four, that ass to fit that ass and fit those quads. Because up to that point, every single single pair of jeans I wore, I had no choice but oh, to sag man. that shit because my ass and legs were too big. That's and or, or, or I had to buy a bigger waist. You get one compliment from a woman and it's over. Yo. You're so fucking pumped. You're like, I'm wearing these every day. <laughs> Yo. Forever. Forever. Yo. Exclamation yeah. point. It was so, uh -huh. it, 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 like, I remember, and it's not like I was out of shape or anything, but it was very frustrating that I went everywhere <laughs> and I couldn't find fucking pants. Not being able to button your pants is the worst. Yo! You know, lay down and button them. Yo! <laughs> yes! It actually was the case. Yeah, pick but, up your fupa and oh. button them. But the show, oh, actually, yeah, you have that experience because <laughs> you were 330 pounds. Oh, yeah. And Simon had to move his abs. Dog, no, but I had to buy shit that was way bigger yeah, and it was no, super definitely. loose on me and I looked... I look fucking bad. Yeah, you have that that thing like around the top, like on the crotch area, where the zipper just like creates like an like a permanent boner. Like you know, it's yes! just like because <laughs> you're you're cinching my, down your belt so much. My pants, yeah. uh, it was like trying to put uh, a pair of pants on like uh, an exercise ball. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, you just kept, I just kept pushing up, and like all that would happen is like everything else would just push up, <laughs> it would just mush. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. nice when you can see your girl putting on pants and she has yeah. to do that. She yeah. just oh, like yeah. the butt mountain. Mm -hmm. Go down and do that again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not so nice when you have to do that. It's like to boomeranged into your head. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way oh, to put it. Oh man. 
But yeah, it's it's. It, Andrew, remember it's this? Andrew, remember the Man Show? Of course. Yeah, the oh. the Man Show would end every show with girls jumping on a trampoline. Mm-hmm. Is that what I Adam think Carolla? In like, yeah, yep, I think yep. in like schoolgirl outfits. Yeah, no, that was amazing. That show got me through many That's what this show difficult needs. nights. <laughs> girls <laughs> jumping on trampolines uh-huh. to end the show every day. <laughs> <laughs> that actually would be a great idea. That show um, is incredible. I'll put out some. I'll put out a, some feels. Cool. A job. A job application. Uh, <laughs> Did, we'll pay minimum wage. And didn't he just like? <laughs> didn't they just like call them like juggies or something like that? Like yeah, yeah. In yeah, the yeah. show, juggies dr- jumping yeah, on trampolines. Like, they, their <laughs> shirts were tied up, and their yeah, their boobs were yeah. everywhere. I remember trying to get a sneak ins of that show as a kid because I was a I was like I was a kid when that show mm-hmm. was out. You know what I mean? So the man show, yeah. whenever I could manage. Yeah, I used to stay yeah. up. Pretty late watching that one. Adam Carroll's a genius. Mm-hmm. You guys remember the? Uh, I, this was my first taste of like mm-hmm. risque shit on TV. The Girls Gone Wild ads. <laughs> of course, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, they, ha- they happened during the fucking man show. <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember when I was like nine or ten. I'd be watching TV late at night when I shouldn't have been. I'd, I'd see Girls Gone Wild. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> try to, <laughs> <laughs> try to get amazing. it off right before the. <laughs> Dude, that guy went to jail for a long time. Oh yeah. Who? Dude, the guy that put those together. Really? Yeah, because he's going around filming girls gone wild. They're not giving consent. Yeah, They're just right. fucking drunk oh. college chicks. Yeah, he got, well, I mean, deservedly, right? But well, like, now they call it OnlyFans. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> right. But they're getting paid. They weren't yeah. getting paid before he yeah, was. Yeah, they getting paid from him. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I was just going to point out, it's, it's kind of silly, but we're, we have this uh, New York Post ad. And uh-huh. this shit makes me feel hella old because I read uh, Sheena Shea addresses Tom Schwartz, Raquel Levi's wedding hookup rumors. Do you know who those people are? I have no fucking clue who these people are. And why are they on the like front page of mm. this New York Post? So, I don't know. It just makes me feel really fucking old because I have no idea who these people are. Mm. Me neither. Bro. <laughs> me neither. But yeah. Anyway, anyway. I sent you a video. I've uh, oh. just... Uh, emailed you a video um this is just kind of just a. we talk a lot in the show about like trying new shit and uh how new stuff like you know it's gonna hurt and be uncomfortable i just thought this was really cool uh, i love this, this. Is, a, this yep. is a good uh good parenting uh good parenting clip and Ooh. uh anybody that's gonna you know start their fitness journey you're gonna fall you're gonna what get jacked fuck? up you're gonna get hurt many times but uh you know hopefully something like this will be a, a good reminder and be encouraging there we go. Okay, sorry. I fucking got logged out of Oh, that's okay. But yeah, I love this shit. Yeah, this is on the Today Show the other day. Five-year-old Operin is practicing a skateboarding trick. She takes a hard fall, but look at this. Her dad, I know, was right there to pick her up. Oh, so Mary, oh, did it hurt you? The drop-in was amazing. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Music sucks. Mm-hmm. Hit her face. Mm-hmm. Damn. And I really want to do it. Sometimes it's scary doing hard things. And it's totally up to you whether you want to give it a go Look right now. Let's get this. You don't have to do cry this. on air, bro. I want this. shit's good. Oh, fucking Michael. Oops. So listen to this. With love and encouragement from Dad, a determined Auburn keeps on trying again and again and again. And she's she eventually a nails the trick. And then Dad and daughter celebrate with this. Look at this. An adorable secret handshake that the two of them created. That is so that, love that. That's so great. Yeah, Auburn, what's her name? Beautiful. Auburn. That's fucking okay. beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, and he 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 gave her an out too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, he's like, you don't have to do this, like you know. But if you want to do it, like there's a possibility you're gonna fall again. Yeah, man. but it's gonna be fun when you get it. Yeah, you know. So he was pointing out the the good and the bad of it. Mm-hmm. And then also, I maybe just you know knowing like, okay, I like she probably realized like I fell. Yeah, and that probably scared her more than it actually. I'm sure it hurt. Mm-hmm. But it probably scared her more than more than uh, anything, more than it, it actually like hurting. Mm-hmm. And so she was probably able to be like, you know what, it is kind of fun to slide back and forth on that skateboard. Uh, so I should go for it again. That's so cool, man. But man, if a little kid can get it, mm. maybe the rest of us can figure it out sometimes, right? Yeah, but we fall harder as adults. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, right on our face. Yeah. But yeah, she kept at it. It's really Speaking cool of trying new things, uh, I have a, a 9 a.m. scheduled jujitsu class I'm going to with Jake tomorrow. Ooh. Jake and with maybe, Jake? Yeah, and maybe one of his friends. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Where y'all going? I just expose him to it. Just uh, a place in uh, Davis. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, give him some exposure to that shit, right? It, dude, I, I think Jake, Jake's going to like it. He's cerebral as fuck, mm-hmm. man. So he'll dig it. That's going to be right up his alley. But... Uh, just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to elbow him in there, you know, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I don't know if he'll like going with me or not, but if he likes going with me, then I'll, I'll be encouraged to go. Yeah. So the interesting thing is the big, I think one of the biggest hurdles for, for a guy is just like being in such close contact with another human in yeah, that, like, right. just like that's trying to hurt you, you know? Will, but once you do it enough, then people it's, are surprisingly like just so nice though. They are. That's the thing. They are <laughs> They're nice. so nice. They're like, Oh yeah. Like, and I mean, the first day that I went to the place in Davis, um, the guy I was working with was pretty big, uh -huh. you know, uh, he's like a heavier dude. And like, I'm sure he's plenty strong. I mean, he, he did a little stuff where I was like, okay, like yeah. I could tell. And I, I don't think he was even trying, you know? And I was like, but he was like so kind and just super fucking gentle. Like I didn't get hurt or nothing happened. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. it was awesome. Experienced people in jujitsu know what it's like to be new. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the cool thing. Like they've been through it, especially if you roll with somebody experienced. Um, that's why they don't usually let white belts roll with white belts. But when you know what it's like, then you know like, oh, they're feeling uncomfortable. They don't know what the fuck's happening. I'm going to be very cool with how we do things. It was like Twister, man, because they're like, put your foot over there. I'm like, <laughs> will my foot go over there? <laughs> like, do they know who they're asking to like put their foot over there? I mean, I, I'll try. Okay. And, yeah. you know, most of the time it kind of worked because you do kind of roll with it. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting. It's something I definitely want to get into. I don't know when uh, exactly I will like finally make the plunge and like go on consistently, but mm -hmm. hopefully it's hopefully it's sometime soon. I'm not putting any pressure on myself. I just know that you know over the next four or five years, I, it's something that I do want to learn and commit to, and it will happen at some point. Mm -hmm. Thing is, man, you're picking up a lot of shit. Like yeah. you just ran 12 miles the other day. You've been picking up running for a while. You're improving at that. You've it, your mobility and all these things have gotten better so it's like you know <laughs> it, it, you got time yeah, <laughs> you know what right, i mean right. I, and i think that's that's something cool for everyone to understand because like you, you're talking a lot about running and we've been doing that for a while uh, we talk about jujitsu and stuff uh, there's lifting there's different types of lifting kettlebells whatever pick off one thing at a time mm -hmm. you know and, I, and if you do want to do some of these things at the same time just give yourself Give yourself the time to improve at each of them. Yeah. Don't expect some type of immediate shit, but just, you know. And don't be all down on yourself if you stop something, you know. Like, it's not a, like for me with running, you know, I went to run a hill the other day. And, and when I started to run it, I recognized that it was, was not a hill. It was a fucking mountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was running. And I had to stop. I had to just be reasonable. And I think sometimes people don't. They maybe don't know that about some people that a lot of people that are really good at stuff. A lot of times they get to be really good because they take their time to get a little more calculated with it. I was like, if I had to, I guess I probably could run this whole thing, but this is like two and a half or three miles pretty much straight up. And I'm by myself. I don't have water with me. I had water in my car, but I was like, I don't want to be a half an hour away from my car and get all cramped up and shit. I was, this will get ugly fast. There's no shade. Just running straight up a hill right into the fucking sun. So I'm like, that just... It's just not smart. Like James Pierriat. What's the chance of dying on this hill? <laughs> thirty percent. Yeah, thirty percent is twenty eight point uh, five uh, is the mm -hmm. cutoff. So anyway, if you're trying something new, I mean, you know, you you might have to take some steps back here and there. Absolutely. But there's time to get back to it. Yeah. How do you get over the uh, the, the close proximity thing? Because that's definitely one for me for jujitsu. Um, other than my like, if I can somehow figure out to not have this back pain. The next thing would be like, I'm not really comfortable being like sweaty and having a big sweaty dude on top of me. I, you know, I don't have that much experience, so he can probably explain it better. But like it just, it was just complete. Well, I did professional wrestling for a while. So like maybe I've mm -hmm. gotten used to some of that before, but it was just completely non-issue. Yeah. Like people are just like, yeah, here, you know, you know, get on top of me and like <laughs> do this. Like they're, because it's so normal to them. Yeah. It's just so common, just like a, just like a back spot with a squat or something. You'd have no problem grabbing somebody and help, assisting them out of that, and not feeling mm -hmm. weird about it, right? Mm -hmm. Just because it's like so normal. Like I got to help this guy get back in the rack. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pretend that this never happened as soon as we, <laughs> as soon as we put the weight back down. But yeah, I, I think you would find that it, it, it's like everyone's so nice that it's just not really a big issue. All right, jujitsu gets super sweaty. Especially yeah, yeah, that mm -hmm. aspect, yeah. super sweaty. But let me first tell you about some of the uncomfortable things. It's kind of fun. Um, so sometimes if you're rolling with somebody and they're very sweaty, I've rolled with people who are like uncomfortably sweaty. And I'm just like, I'm just going to roll in a way where you're not touching me too much. Because <laughs> like you are like some people, sometimes they don't know maybe to wear deodorant. You don't run into this often, but when it does happen, 
you know, usually usually there's some communication like, hey, bro, can you tell that guy that he stinks? <laughs> or maybe I have to tell him that he stinks. Ugh. It sometimes happens. I'm going over the bad shit yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. like you know what to expect. The fun thing is beards. Because when drips, when sweat drips off of beards mm. and someone's on top, I always make sure, like, if I'm on top of somebody and I start getting sweaty in my, I can see my beard sweat going towards their mouth. I'm like, ooh, let me, uh, uh. all right, let's keep going. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I'm considerate, but some people aren't. Sometimes, uh, like, you'll, you'll get some yep. salt. It's just what happens, right? It's just what happens. You're like, let me line this beard sweat up with his eyeball. (laughs) (laughs) You make this roll really bad. Sometimes, like, you're in a position where, you know, there's obviously neon belly, but there's... uh, Balls to the face. Balls to the face, Mm -hmm. you know? Whole bunch of nutsack Mm -hmm. on top of you and mount. It happens. While being extra sweaty. Yeah, there's positions that are kind of claustrophobic, too, where you're like, Mm -hmm. wow, okay, like, I'm... I cannot, I can barely breathe. And, and there's like balls in my face. <laughs> and as much as you try to force yourself out of it, and if they're good, to... they're just like, oh yeah, yeah, get it, get it, yeah. <laughs> you can't move, can you, motherfucker? Right? <laughs> but, 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 like you get used to it, dude. Like you learn how to breathe, you learn how to relax. Mm-hmm. None of that stuff, like none of, after a while of doing it, it doesn't bother you. It's just like, it's jujitsu. You know what I mean? And I'm sure as you get better, maybe people aren't, I'm sure everyone's always respectful, but I'm sure that people like, they're not, they want to win, right? So like, as you get better, then they're going to crank up the intensity, right? Yeah, absolutely. And none of the shit I'm saying is like people doing that shit on purpose. No Mm -hmm. one's purposefully trying to get their sweat in your mouth. No one's purposefully trying to fart in your face. But when somebody does fart on the mats, (laughs) everybody else's reaction is always great. Because like Casio sometimes, so will fart. If someone will fart and be like, hey, whoa. (laughs) Casio will do that shit. I'll be like, ooh. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's always fun. It's always fun. I'll fart it a few times. I'll just be like, hey, I'll stop. Cause I've been in positions where I was, I've been in positions on top where I'm like, I'm, I go for something. I'm like, and I just immediately get off. Cause I'm like, I don't need you to eat my shit. Like, I'm not going to put you through that. Let's just stop rolling. bro. What if that was just a technique? Yeah. The, technique, the, the finish. That's a tournament technique. Yeah. Tournament technique. Eat it from some really bad shit that gets your gut going. Mm, you're just get in mouth and just mm, farting in people's mm, mouth. Make them fucking tap because of the smell. They're just puking. That, that's a great strategy. Actually. Damn. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen to Jake tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I hope he can. I hope he can bring uh, Matthew with him. Matthew's a, his training partner in here all the time. It'd be cool. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just think it'd be neat if either one of them got exposed to it and was like, "I think this is kind of cool. I want to do this more often." Mm-hmm. You know? It's super fun starting jujitsu with a friend. I remember when I started. Um, my friend Brian started a little bit after me, and it was so fun to be able to go to class together, to be able to see each other get better. He just stopped after a while because he didn't, he didn't think it was for him after like a year. But I really enjoyed having that, like having mm-hmm. one of my homies do it with me. So that's a, that's another pro tip. If you really want to stick with jujitsu, see if you can get a friend of yours to join with you, because like that is fun. It's really yeah. Fun. You're both screwed. Yeah, <laughs> you're both brand new. Both yeah. gonna go through the same shit together. There's stories y'all can talk about how y'all getting your ass beat, and then ten years later, y'all are badasses beating everybody up. Hmm. When uh, so not necessarily for your friend, but like do you, you know, because you used to talk about when people once they get their blue belt, they kind of just start to fade off. Um, <laughs> do you think that's because jujitsu might take away too much from the rest of their life? No, I don't think it's because of that. I think it's because like you get your blue belt, you've achieved something, and most people, it's like it's it's a it's a big fucking mountain to go over like you get your blue belt you've done it for a while you're adept Mm -hmm. but now it's like there is so much more progress that i think like some people are just like oh okay i'm gonna take a break i just got my blue belt let me take a little bit of a break and then they never come back Mm. like that's like it's i think it's not typically like i'm gonna get my blue belt and quit but it's like i've achieved this i've gotten my blue belt okay you know it's like white yellow blue white blue purple brown black oh White, blue, purple, brown, black. There's kids' colors, too. They have gray and yellow and shit, but for adults, white, blue, purple, brown, black. But I think when people get their blue belt, it's like it's like when you are on a diet and you get to a certain point and you mm. take a diet break mm. and you maybe have a cheat week. Mm. That cheat week turns into a cheat year and then you're back to your... <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what getting your blue belt is like for some people because then they're like, okay, whew, got my blue. Let me chill. Damn, life is good. I'm not feeling sore. I'm not going back. I'm not in pain. <laughs> Do you also think maybe uh, like as a blue belt that you have uh, 
pretty good knowledge to protect yourself pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like a blue belt like in jujitsu. It takes a year or two. It usually takes people two years. Yeah. Um, so okay. That's like standard, like two, two, two to three, two to two and a half years to get your blue belt. But after that, like you will feel more confident in, mm -hmm. in physical settings with other, you will feel yeah. very confident in physical settings with other people. That um, makes sense. That That's probably a big reason why people drop off too. They're probably like, I'm, I'm, mm. I have not, I have some knowledge here. Yes. And, and if somebody messes with me, um, I can be confident that I can it, at least, uh, maybe uh, hold them off, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, until the fight's over or whatever, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than like maybe before they just didn't know how things would turn out and they didn't have a lot of confidence. You know? Yeah. But there's a rare big gap between blue belts and purple belts. Mm -hmm. And then an even, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, the progression of jujitsu and the things you learn because it's just like, there's so much. It's, there's really so much, so many different types of games for so many different types of body types, which is why people find it so fun because you can develop something for yourself. Like this is the way I move. Like Mike, um, Mike Isretel, mm -hmm. he does something called, he said like, I'm a half guard player. And he's a half guard player because it's actually a, a position that if you're very, you know, stocky and mm -hmm. stiff, that's a good position to be very good at. It's actually very advantageous for you, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're a longer guy, there's like De La Hiva, there's spider guard. If you have long legs and long limbs. So there's so much for each person. That's kind of neat, right? It's like there's, uh, I'm sure there's, when you get to the highest level, there's like kind of like a standard body type that uh, maybe performs the best typically. Um, but uh, does, it, does it vary quite a bit? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you look at like world champs, mm -hmm. man, like you will see long guys, you will see stocky guys, mm -hmm. you will see all types. Right. <laughs> like you, BSB is again, if you're a really good half guard player, mm -hmm. that is hard. <laughs> like that, mm -hmm. like that's first off, it's tough for people to escape from trying so to. So you're on the ground, so it doesn't matter how tall you are necessarily or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's really like, I, it, I've thought about this, but there is no like world champion archetype like there is with CrossFit. Mm. The CrossFit, it's like five, six, buck sixty to buck ninety. I'm just 90. picturing that a lot of the guys look like Hoist. No, mm. no, some of them do. Yeah, yeah. but a lot of them, mm -hmm. a lot of them really vary. Right. Yeah. It's like there's 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 no I, really with jujitsu. It's like if you are very good at your jujitsu with your body mm -hmm. type, if you're really good, you can fuck people up at the highest levels. Mm. So there, there, there isn't a, there isn't an, a world champion. Body. That makes actually, that makes sense. Now I think about it more, uh, just because, uh, somebody that has the mobility of a Hoist Gracie, um, there's a lot of advantages to that, but then there's also some advantages of, of being a shorter person being like, a maybe like Joe Rogan, like being explosive <sighs> and, and not, not that Hoist Gracie wouldn't be explosive. Um, but. A lot of times, those shorter guys can be very like Jimmy House. Mm -hmm. Like those shorter guys can can pack a lot into a shorter frame body, right? There are also positions that, like with certain body types, moves won't work. Mm. Like for example, there's no way I'm going to try to triangle a Chad Wesley or, or a Jimmy House because their traps in their neck are too big. So once you put on that triangle, it's actually good for them because <laughs> they're like, "Hoo hoo, bitch!" Boom. Like <laughs> Chad did that to me twice because <laughs> I couldn't wrap my shit around him. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, there are advantages to different body types. That's why you can build a game around your body. That's the really cool thing. You can build a game around your body. You guys see this from Nikki Rod? <laughs> oh, dog. Nikki be doing the wildest he shit. Fuck this guy. Up. I think Jesus. <laughs> 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 I think it's really cool though. Like uh, it's really encouraging because you're getting so many different things from jujitsu. I also recognize that it can be very hard on the joints and hard, tough on the body and stuff like that. But you're getting some resistance training while you're doing it. Mm. You're getting cardiovascular. So those people that are like, oh man, I don't know about weights. Like I, I still would advise you to lift weights because I'll, I'll always do that. I, oh, yeah. I think, you know, I'm trying to make the world a better place to lift. So you got to lift. But if you really don't want to lift, I think, uh, you can go on hikes. You can do jujitsu. There's other other ways to get some resistance in your life, you know. And also, like, there are so many ways of lifting weights that no, like, I think, I, I really think there's like no one out there who shouldn't be doing some form of lifting yeah. because the lifting doesn't have to be going to a gym with a barbell. You can have a few kettlebells at home and get. I do that a lot. Like, I do a kettlebell stuff mm -hmm. at home all the time, and I can get an amazing workout with literally two bells, you know, and some body weight. Like, it's. There's no reason why you shouldn't lift because the lifting will keep your body resilient for everything else you're going to do. It's just too damn beneficial. How skip. long does it take you to do that? 
kettlebell stuff? Yeah, if you decide to do that in a day, like, I'm sure you get carried away and you probably end up jumping rope and you probably end up doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you really wanted it to, like, how long does it take you usually? I can do tw- I can do really good workout in 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. And if I just wanted to really up the pace, I could do a really good workout in 15 minutes and really, really get nice. in a lot of volume. And it's right at your own house. It's in my know? backyard, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, so it's it's like they're, they're – lower we always talk about this you mention it all the time lower the barrier to entry mm-hmm. for all of these things so you don't have excuses on to why you shouldn't do it if we're too busy on a certain day and for some reason i wasn't able to lift here i'll lift at home i love that with running it's like a 30 minute run takes 30 minutes like yeah. it doesn't take any extra it's not like lifting where sometimes you get like way into lifting and then you're there forever um, or sometimes there's like a drive to the gym and some of those things can be a turnoff but if mm-hmm. you just lift at your house uh, or if you just run from your house, I mean, or, or apartment or go on a walk or yeah. something. Yeah. Any of it. Um, it's just, it's amazing. It doesn't take a lot of time and you get the exercise that you want. Dre is consistently posting videos from his apartment. Mm-hmm. Like literally he has a mat on his floor and he's doing kettlebell stuff in his fucking He's coming room. back. By the I way. know. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, he's coming back mid September. I think. Yeah, yeah man. Damn. Fucking love Dre, dude. He's so awesome. Take us on out of here, Andrew. Sure thing. Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's episode. Uh, please let us know what you guys thought about today's conversation down in the uh, old comment section there. And uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you guys are not subscribed already. And uh, please follow the podcast at MB Power Project on uh, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. My Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter is at I am Andrew Z. And Seema, where are you at? Guys, how your toe spread been looking? Mm. Mm. I've been like... A little bit better, but... Yeah, yeah. mine keeps getting better and better. My mm-hmm. feet have been making me hard and shit. Mm. I'm just like, ooh, this is getting, oh. mm-hmm. getting exciting. I'm getting a foot fetish by my own feet. Mm-hmm. Check out the Discord, guys. Not bad. I'm gonna check out the Discord. We're gonna, we're yeah, go to the Discord. A lot of good shit happening there. Pat and Seema Inning on Instagram or YouTube. Pat and Seema Inning on TikTok and Twitter. And please, if you listen on the audio side, if you haven't left a review yet, please leave us a review. It helps the podcast grow. And we're growing. Mm. Mark. I'm at Mark's Belly Bell. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye.